Hello again, this is Margie Hare and I'm so excited to share with you and introduce you to a very dear colleague of mine, Sana, who I've been working with in this clinic. She has heaps of experience in many different fields, but as a spiritual guide, she's absolutely awesome. So some people would call her an intuitive psychic. She refers to herself as an empath. So Sana, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Thank you for coming in today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Sana, what took you into this world of spirituality? I fell in love with spirit when I was a very little girl, when I was about six years old. And I didn't really understand it as something separate from myself. It was something that just simply was. And I used to use it as a part of my fantasy world. But then as I grew, I learned that it was my real world not a fantasy world. The older I got, the more I realized that it must be a part of my daily life. And though I had other professions, it was my foundation and my rock. And one day my two daughters sat with me and said, Mom, it's time. It's time that you begin to do this for your living full time. And I looked at them with tears rolling down my face. And I said, you're right. And that's why I do this full time. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, Sana, my mission is to help clients take charge of their health naturally. So with this in mind, how does this fit with your philosophy and your spiritual work with clients? Mm, good question. Spirit world is not separate from us. In the olden days, we used to go to churches or synagogues or things like that. And many still do, and that's their prerogative to do so. But my belief and my understanding is that this is a part of our world. So while we pour a glass of water, make a cup of tea, create a meal, make love, whatever it is that we're doing, we have the opportunity to deepen and widen in spirit. In other words, deepen and widen in love. So it is my belief and my understanding that what we do is we have an opportunity to become spirit in all things. That's what I choose to do and that's my belief to offer other people. This is why we listen to people like Dalai Lama who suggest that we have compassion in our daily life. That's a way in, that is a way that we can develop our spirituality. I come across this quite a lot, grief and anger. How do you counsel people through this very challenging time? I think that in my clinic, I see grief and anger and fear as well. The grief is something that I have noticed people need time to work through. Time is a very tricky thing, but it is time. So when we have full-blown grief, for example, the loss of something that matters to them, whether it's a business, a house, an animal, a parent, a child, oftentimes we need time to deal with that, just plain old time. But in the same token, we don't need to wallow. Wallowing is very self-destructive. It is bringing the past up, and making it the present moment. Whereas grief is just the feeling in this now. So instead of a client going into the past with their grief and the wallowing, we ask them to be very present to what is being shown to them in that moment. For example, we might find that uh, a parent has passed 
and therefore they say, my mother passed, my mother passed, and they forget to look today that it might be springtime, the jonquils might be out, it might be a better day for them. And they go to the past. So we try to remind people in grief to move into the present moment, yet respecting the circumstance that they're in. As far as anger is concerned, many do need to work through anger. Again, anger usually and almost always is placed in the past. In other words, we're reacting to a situation that has happened before that causes us to respond to that and causes us to be angry. We're driving along the road, someone cuts us off, we go, ah, in that instant. But we remember that last time when someone cut us off and we did the same thing. Someone cut us off and we did the same thing. Rather than being in the moment, in the now, noting that we don't need to do that thing again. We don't need to be reactive again. We don't need the past to be brought to the, to the now. So that the anger has a way of, of trans, transmitting a new energy to them. The energy of the now. Does that make some sense to you? That's, that's beautiful. Mm. Great explanation. Sorry, it's a bit of a <laughs> Sana, are there suggestions that you would make to help people who are completely out of balance and need to bring their spiritual, mental, and personal back in balance? Yes. yes. Sana, I know that meditation is quite an important part of the work and the teaching that you do. Is there a particular style of meditation that you recommend? Yes. I've been meditating since 1972, a very, very long time. And I've taught meditation and I love meditation. Meditation is a, definitely a major part of the cornerstone of my work. But I like mindfulness. And the reason why I like mindfulness is because I believe meditation is a chance that spirit, some people call God, has the opportunity to speak to you. So what if we opened into the now, the mindfulness that Thich Nhat Hanh speaks about so much, and let God, in essence, speak to us in every action. So mindfulness in making a cup of tea, mindfulness in driving a car again, mindfulness in making love again, and using all of our life as a type of meditation. This is what my guides have suggested that I do. And I said to them, wait, you mean I'm not supposed to meditate twice a day, 20 minutes a day? And they said, for me, it is now an addiction for you, Sana. It is time for you to just live meditation. It was so lovely to have you here today, but I want to ask you one last question. Good. Do you have three tools in your spiritual toolbox that you would like to share with our listeners today? Number one, and I think this is very, very important, is to know your feelings, to understand your feelings. So for example, if we're beginning to feel anxious in our tummy, to recognize that feeling. Oh, I've got something going on in my tummy, what is it? Oh, I'm feeling anxious. Or I'm feeling fear in my solar plexus. Or I feel odd and fearful in my neck. The reason why this is so important is because when we can recognize the feelings in our body, we can shift them if they're not working for us. Or we can go into them as a way that we can explore the sensations, i.e. the fear, i.e. the anger or the grief, and transmute it to another sensation, that of love and that of light. We choose. Number two, mindfulness. I think mindfulness work is a beautiful prayer for us to have. And so that's a brilliant cornerstone. And number three is self-love. Without the exploration of self-love, and I say fall in love with yourself first by liking yourself, and then move from the liking yourself into the falling in love with yourself. And if you can do that, then you're set to go, because then you're set to be compassionate and loving transmitting light and power and grace to everyone you meet. So that's my three 
but you really limited me there because I had lots more. <laughs> Sona, that was great. That was fabulous information. I'm sure everybody who was listening found that really beneficial. And at least now they'll be able to get hold of you as well. Oh, thank you. So thank you so much. Oh, I really appreciate you coming in. If you enjoyed that little segment, please tick the like button. And if you want to watch the next interview with someone very special in the health and wellness industry, then Subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's more information on my website. Have a fabulous day.